Good morning and welcome to today's video. I'm here with Bruce, who currently holds the seven day cycling record. 3,332, what is it? 3,333.3 kilometers in a week. We're just gonna get a short ride in, just 100K. I don't wanna do any of your mad stuff uh, and have a little chat about it. What do you reckon a quick uh, cinnamon bun in Windsor? I reckon it's a second day open, isn't it? So we may as well make that the destination of choice. Haven't been there in six months, so. Last time I did an interview, someone was moaning in the comments that we were still wearing helmets. <laughs> like, we don't want to see our helmet here. Safety on the bench. You covered 3,333 kilometers, 0 0.3. Yeah, 0 0.3. Don't in seven that. days. One, you broke the record by a long, long way. What was the existing record? 2,842 kilometers. 2,842, so you smashed it, and you chose to do it in Thailand. Why Thailand? I went there a number of years ago and uh, just surface of the road so good the weather's always so good um, and, and you just the speed you can ride compared with the UK conditions is you know like out there I, I can ride at 30 plus K an hour nearly all of the time for about a 40 watts less output than I'll be putting out here to do 28 K an hour yeah so that's a big difference like Percentage wise on the watts, it's about 15% less. Do a ride out there and you push on the pedals a bit, you'll average 33k an hour. What wattage were you averaging when you were riding along? I think my average for the whole thing is about one under 140, like for the whole week. Um, there was a couple of days where I averaged like 120, yeah. you know, 125. So low. People are like, how are you managing this at that? Thailand. Yeah, it's just the conditions <laughs> are so good, you know. It's like every day out there, you go out on shorts and a jersey. You don't even have to take arm warmers. You don't have to take anything except the you know, spear, you know, spears in case you Amazing. need a punch. You know? And also, if you need food or water, there's a 7-Eleven. Literally, you'd be lucky if you do everywhere. 10 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. It's crazy. Isn't it? It's brilliant. So, like, you can always get water when you need it. You can always get some, some sustenance when you need it. Well, what were you eating? Eating, uh, well, I just eat what I feel like really. Like yeah. my main thing is I went to Thailand, spent a month there before I started to get used to the so the slight difference in food, yeah, my yeah. body was settled with what I what was what was working for me. The spicy food might not no, be I the best away option. From the spicy food, but, <laughs> there's a know, lot of that over there. During the days when I was out riding there's at the seven elevens they sell like like cheese and ham croissants and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're cheap as chips. You just buy they're really easy to eat, really easy to digest and you can get like you know, coke, and then the main thing out there is obviously the water. You've got to make sure you never put yourself in a deficit for the water because it's hot. It's hot all day. What sort of temperature was it? In the mid-afternoons, it get to about 36 degrees. Wow. Okay. So, not so that acclimatization period before you started was really important. Oh, not really just important. The food. Yeah, yeah, really like... important. I found the first two or three days I wasn't too bad, but as obviously as I got more fatigued, like the Thursday and the Friday, I really the afternoons really got to me. I had so much and so that I did this little loop. It was only about eight miles round, eight kilometers round. And uh, it, the reason I did this loop is it would go through a little forest on one side and then down down a highway on the other side. It was quite a fast loop as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But the main thing was to get into the shade for half yeah. the loop. So I could like have a bit of uh, relief from the sun, the sun pressure, you know. So how many hours a day were you on the bike? So his first five days, was about, I don't think I did less than 17 hours. So it was 18 and, 18 and a half. Start at midnight, finish at seven or eight o'clock at night. Put my Strava on, just literally to, I, I did the first four days private just because I didn't want any negativity to get into my head. Yeah. You know? And also I wanted to get to the point where I sort of knew I was gonna get the record done before I put it out there. Yeah, you were a bit secret about it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think this time I, I was, say, there's a saying, isn't there, if you, if you tell people about stuff when you've done it rather than before you do it, you know? So I, I got to that, I've had stuff in the past where the negativity or some comments got in my head because you're so physically and mentally fatigued from the hours and the time. 
it can really affect your mind. Guess who, yeah. So I decided that the best option was to not put it out there until I was in a position where I, you know, I knew I'd get it done, and and then the negativity doesn't creep in in the same way, you know. So the rules actually say you can do it on any bike. You could have done it on a TT bike. Why didn't you? Yeah, the rule is you've got to do it on one bike. Uh, you can ride any bike, but it's got to be the same bike for the whole week. Um, the reason I rode a road bike rather than a TT bike is nearly all my miles are done on a road bike anyway. Uh, and it, it also it was more about comfort issue, you know, like you're not trying to do, it's not a speed thing, it's an it's a endurance thing and comfort really starts to play a part in the end, you know, if you're riding on a bike that's shaking you to bits for a week, you know, I did, I, I can't remember how many hours, 112 hours I think it was for the week. Um, if you send up in 112 hours on a bike that's uncomfortable, it's going to get pretty hard. So it's about the comfort is why I rode a road bike. You know? So the whole absolutely amazing ride is on Bruce's Strava. Um, I'll flick up a few of the stats here, but also link down below if you want to give him a follow on Strava because he always does some amazing rides and it's quite cool to, um, to, actually, to actually follow that and see. Average day for him is like 250k. What I want to know, Bruce, is what's next? It's good when you get one of these things done because you're mentally in a good place and, and a lot of this stuff is a, is a mental game more than, a, more than it is physical. Um, you know, you need to be in the right frame of mind to tackle one of these things because it's, it takes a lot of mental energy up. Um, so I was going to look at doing the Le Joggle. I've tried that twice and both times it got close but had problems. So I want to do that but obviously with the COVID situation this year, um, the planning for that's now probably been put back until 2021. So I still want to go and do it because it's, it's niggling. Yeah, it's yeah, niggling yeah, yeah. that I've been but close to it. It's got to be the right time of year and yeah, everything as well. It's exactly. got to be warm. It's got yeah. Yeah. Um, so my next one is I'm going to go back to Thailand at the end of the year is my plan. I used to have the month record. Mark Beaumont took that off me when he did his round the world in 80 days thing. Um, so I'd like to have another go again that back. And from my experiences in Thailand last year. It's got all the right conditions, environment, everything's perfect for it. So I'm going to go back and see if I can concentrate for a month really and have another go at that. Where's your cinnamon bun gone? It's still up there. Well, you got coffee. to eat. Have it. <laughs> Priorities, mate. <laughs>would you recommend people go and try the same out in Thailand? Thailand's just an awesome place to ride the bike. The roads are good, the weather's always super settled so it's, it's warm every day. You don't really need to take anything with you in your ride. Uh, motorists are super friendly. They're used to like riding with, uh, driving with <coughs> mopeds. Yes, yeah, so it's two-wheeled vehicles, they're just yeah. more aware, right? Yeah. Same in Vietnam. You're treated as an equal, 100%, you know? You're not riding a bike, you're just using a bike as a mode of transport, so people are really brilliant. I thought it was one way. Yeah, it is one way. <laughs> there you go, nice one way street to film on and uh, there's loads of cars coming the other way. As if the arrow painted on the road wasn't enough. So Bruce was just saying something to me uh, about how important it is to savour the time that you're doing these challenges and sort of, you, you want to remember it forever, right? You have to take a minute sometimes. Yeah, I think in the past when I've done them, all I've been focused on is the the number at the end, the end result, you know, getting it done sort of thing. Um, and one thing I've tried to do this time, and it really, I was really pleased that it, it worked out well, was just like enjoy the moment. Because at the end of the day, spend all these hours doing the work to get to that point to do it. It seems a shame to just focus on the end result. And, you know, the, the it's the journey that's the fun part of it, not the destination, I think. Oh. It was the journey, and I kept reminding myself all week, especially when I was having tough moments, like, just enjoy this, you know, like this is what you've worked really hard to be here doing and you're paying for it out of your own pocket. It's not like, you know, so take it in. And I, I did it really well and, and it, not one day did I sort of think about how far I had to go. I didn't think about that yeah. once. I just, you know. So there you go, it's, um, it's enjoyable. So off you go, <laughs> go and ride 130 watts as long as you can and uh, report back, see how far you get. Probably not as far as him. Mm.